So let's follow the process, right? So the process that I like to do is graph the angle. And for some of you, this is still a little bit new. You're not as developed on the graphing side yet, so it might take you a little bit longer. But again, I think if we can all agree that half of a circle is pi, and if we have our denominator in thirds, we could rewrite that at 3 pi over 3. So therefore, we understand we're at 4 pi over 3, which is just an extra third. So here's 3 pi over 3, and then we just need to go an extra third, right? So there's our angle. Then we understand that the reference angle is from here to here. We win an extra pi over 3 over pi. So therefore, the distance between our terminal side and our x-axis is pi over 3. So we could say the reference angle is pi over 3. Guys, your reference angle is either going to be pi over 3, pi over 4, or pi over 6, right? You don't got that many options. And usually that's kind of a good indicator of what it's going to be. So anyways, we have 2 um, is pi over 3. Then the next step is going to determine, oh wait, sketch the angle to find the point on the unit circle. So we go to our unit circle, our first quadrant, which we need to know. And we know that the point on the unit circle for the, that intersects the angle pi over 3 is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Okay, we just need to know that. There's not really much we can do to get around that. And then step number four and step number five, I kind of lumped together. Um, step number four is really identifying, okay, so now we know that's the reference angle. These two angles are the same, right? So this point, this point on the unit circle is the same as that point, right? However, the signs are different because this is in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, my x and y's are both negative. So my, really my point I'm dealing with is negative 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2. So now I know my coordinate points, I can just follow my definitions. And that's why these definitions are so great. Sine is just the y coordinate. So sine of theta is my y coordinate is negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, that was easy, okay. right? Not really much math to do there. Cosine of theta is the x coordinate. That's negative 1 half. And I'll do tangent um, last. So cosecant of theta, which is the reciprocal of sine, is going to be a negative 2 over radical 3. You guys are going to get very familiar with doing these. And once you guys do this work once, like rationalizing denominator, you guys are going to see these answers keep on repeating. So my goal is that for you guys to get so familiar with this work here that you remember that, oh, 2 over square root of 3, that, yeah, that's just 2 square root of 3 over 3. Right? Like you should get to know these answers very quickly. The reciprocal of cosine is secant theta, which is just negative 2. Okay? Um, so now let's go and look at the tangent, cotangent, which at first is, looks pretty confusing. Tangent is going to be negative 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Now I had some students that were getting confused. They're like, ah, I don't like, should I multiply by the negative or the positive? Well, first of all, guys, we have a negative divided by negative. We just know the final answer is going to be positive, right? So I mean, let's just forget about the negatives. We, we know it's going to be positive. If you guys remember in our last units, when you have a fraction divided by fraction, you just simply multiply by the reciprocal. Anything multiplied by reciprocal goes to 1. So then here, I'm just left with, right, but what's going to happen with the 2s? Divide out. So I'm left with the square root of 3. Done. Wow. Then let's do the cotangent, which is now the reciprocal of that. So that's 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. Here again, and again, guys, like you're not like next time you guys get square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half, I hope you guys remember it's square root of 3. Like, I mean, you guys can practice it once in a couple times, but you're going to get the square root of 3 like every single time. Here, you're going to get the same answer every time. This is going to happen over and over and over again. So I'll show you the work, how we get the answer, but I, don't, I hope you guys don't have to keep on repeating this every single time. So you multiply by the reciprocal on the top and bottom. The 2's again divide out, and you're left with 1 over the square root of 3. And these were negatives, but they turned to positive. And then you guys rationalize the denominator, and you just get square root of 3 over 3. 